And don't forget to subscribe to Bag O' Day Crochet. You can subscribe by clicking this red button right here. And don't forget to click this little bell right there next to it. That way you'll always be notified whenever Bag O' Day puts on a new video. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this shawlette. It's just kind of a mini shawl for t tutorial purposes. So I get started another one. I kind of cut it short. But you can make this as long as you want for as big of a shawl as you want it to be. But right now mine stands at uh, 41 inches, about 41 or 42 inches across the top. And from the top to the bottom corner, or the bottom point, is 18. So it's more, uh, it's wider at the top. It's not quite as pointy as the bottom as some triangle shawls are, as you can see. But like I said, please make this as big as you want. This is just, it's just a smaller shawlette. But those pictures in the beginning do not do it justice. A look at the sparkle on the shawl. Sequence in that. When I had it out in the sun, taking pictures, it was gorgeous, but the pictures just couldn't pick it up. Very pretty. It's so sparkly in the sun. In the sun. Okay, but it's super easy to do. Remember, you make it as big as small as you want. This would look gorgeous as a big full-size shawl. Or it looks great just as a little shawlette, too, just to wrap around you. So, let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project, I am using Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. This is a medium weight number four. Actually, it says it's a lightweight three. I always classify it as a medium weight number four. So if you're not going to use this yarn, my recommendation would be to use a medium weight number four yarn. And it's a 50 cotton, 50 polyester blend. Of course, you can use any four weight yarn that you have. 392 yards per cake. Now, if you want to make it the same size as me, one cake will be enough. But I recommend a big, big old shawl. And then you're probably going to need two cakes of it for that. The color is called whipped cream. And then that sparkle that you see is I added... This is from Hobby Lobby, Yarn Bee Bejeweled Sequence Gold Thread. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's very thin thread. Oh, but it, is it ever pretty when you mix it with something? With little sequins through it. Now, you, if you do want to get this, you will find this at Hobby Lobby next to the thread. Now, it won't be like, an, it'll be uh, right, won't be mixed in with the yarn. It'll be with the crochet thread and next to the floss and stuff. But what I did is I had two of those and I put two of them together. So I have two of these sequence yarns and then I mix it with one of my copy cotton. So I'm working with three together, but those two are very thin and they don't really amount to much at all of anything. So if you want to make it the size I'm making, it, two of these will be enough, but my, I suggest you make it larger and then you'll need four of these. Of course, you do not even have to add these in it. You can make it just a regular with a regular four weight yarn and it'll still be just as beautiful. That's just something neat to add to it if you just happen to want to add some sparkle. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Bag O'Day on Crochet on YouTube. I got tons, hundreds of tutorials for you to check out. I do lots of all kinds of other yarn related activities on my channel. I try to keep my channel pretty fun. Don't forget to hit that notification bell too so you don't miss any of my videos. So like I said, this is very easy. So I got my two strands of my uh, thread there with the sequence and then I'm mixing it with my copy cotton, my regular four weight yarn. Okay. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. The only thing I would think that would be a little difficult for this is making sure you get all three pieces of yarn <laughs> each time you go through your hook. Sometimes it's a little hard just to make sure you get them all. Okay. So now I'm going to work a chain of four. Now this is going to it take a little bit getting used to working with this, this yarn. But once you get it, it'll be super easy. 
And now we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. You see that sequence just sparkle. Oh, I love sparkly stuff. It's so pretty. Just like that. Okay, we're going to chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to work three double crochets through the center of the ring. So there's one and two and there's three and then we're going to do a chain of two and then we're going to go back into the ring again and we're going to work three more double crochets. like that close up that center circle a little bit later and then later on we could sew it together more so at the end of round one there you'll have six double crochets and you'll have your chain two space that okay so now we're going to start row two we are going to chain one and turn our work now no matter what row you're on the very first stitch always gets three double crochets in it no matter where you're at no matter what row three double crochets into the very first stitch Now I'm going to chain one, skip one, and I'm going to double crochet into the next. And now I'm at my chain two space. I'm not going to chain one after that stitch. What I'm going to do is work directly in the chain two space. Now, no matter what row you're on, every time the chain two space always gets the same thing. It'll get right through the space, one double crochet, chain two, and one more double crochet into the same chain two space so it's always going to get that no matter what row you're on it's always the same now since we ended with a double crochet over here we're going to start with a double crochet here and then we will chain one and then we will skip one and then we'll be our last stitch and again no matter what row you're on, no matter wh what row, it's always, the last stitch is always the same. Three double crochets into the last stitch. So there's one, two, and three and that'll end row two and you'll have ten double crochet now now we're going to start <clears throat> row three row three and four are the repeat rows for the whole shawl so it's just a two row repeat very easy so we're going to chain one and turn our work as always we always start with three double crochets into the same stitch the very first stitch so there's one two and three now we're going to chain one we're going to skip one and we're going to double crochet into the next and we will repeat this until we get to our chain two space chain one skip this chain space here and double crochet into the next and you would do that until you got to your chain two space here we are coming up on our chain two space there's no more chain spaces to skip here okay so we're not going to chain one we're going to go put a double crochet into the next stitch and then we're at our chain two space the chain two spaces do not chain one again go right into it and work one double chain two and one double always same thing every time okay so we want to repeat over here what we did over here so we ended with two double crochets right here so one there and one there so we want to start right here with two double crochets so there's one 
and two. And then we will start by chaining one, skipping this chain space and double crochet into the next. And we would repeat this until we get to the end. So we're gonna chain one. We got one stitch to skip here and then we'll be at our last stitch. The last stitch, we'll get three double crochets into it, always. And that'll end row three. Now you'll have 14 stitches. Row four, we are going to chain one and turn our work. There's only a little bit of difference in this one, and that's right down here before we get to the chain two space, and I'll show you. So we're gonna go ahead and start by putting three double crochets into the very first stitch. And then we're gonna chain one, we're gonna skip one, and double into the next. And that's what we're gonna repeat till we get to our chain two space. Chain one, you skip the chain space and double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the chain space, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next. So now we're at our chain two space. So the difference between this row and this row is, here we did two double crochets before we hit the chain space. This row is only one. So do not chain one after this double crochet. Go right into the chain space and work your one double, chain two, and one double like that. Now since we ended with one double crochet over here, we will start with one double crochet here. And then we'll start our chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the space, double crochet into the next. Chain one, Skip the space, double crochet into the next. And then we got chain one, we got two stitches left, we skip one, and then the last stitch, we work three double crochets into the last stitch, just like always. Like that. And that'll end row four. And now you'll have a total of 16 stitches to get that sparkle. Now we're just gonna repeat rows three and four. So for row five, we're gonna repeat row three. We are going to chain one and turn our work. So I'll go ahead and show you again. We'll start off by working three doubles into the very first stitch. And then I'm gonna do a chain one skip one and double into the next. And that's what I'm gonna repeat. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. And you do this all the way down until you get to your chain two space. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. Chain one, Skip the space, double into the next. And right here on this row, we don't chain one. We go ahead and double into the next stitch. So now you got two double crochets there in a row before you get to your chain two space on this, on this row. Now we go into the chain two space and we work our two doubles, or our one double, I'm sorry, one double, chain two, and then one double. And since we ended with two double crochets here before the chain space, we're gonna go ahead and put two double crochets into the next two stitches over here. And then we start again by chaining one, 
skip in the chain space, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip in the space, double crochet into the next. And we repeat this until we get to the end. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. And now you have two stitches left. Chain one, skip one and go ahead and put three double crochets into the last stitch. Just like that. Now it's okay if it's kind of looking wobbly. Don't worry, the more rows you do, it'll look better. It'll start, you'll have to give it a little bit of stretchings every now and then, but that's fine. Now, uh, for row five, you'll have a total of 20 stitches now. That row five was just a repeat of row three. So for row six, it's just a repeat of row four. We're gonna chain one and turn our work three double crochets into the same stitch. The very first one. And then we chain one, skip one, and double into the next. Chain one, skip one, and double. So this is what we're gonna do until we get to our chain two space. Chain one, we skip the space, double into the next. So we're just keeping the double crochets lined up, as you can see. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. Chain one, skip the space, double. And I'm going to do this until I get down here to my chain two space. Okay, I'm coming down here. I have two stitches left. I chained one, I'm gonna skip one, and I'm going to double up there into that last stitch before my chain two space. And now I'm not gonna chain one. I'm gonna go directly into the chain two space and work one double, chain two, and one double. And then I'm going to, since we ended with one double crochet here, I'm gonna start with one double here. And then we repeat, chain one, Skip one, double into the next. Chain one, skip the space, double into the next. And we were gonna do this until we get up to our last two stitches. Go ahead and chain one. I got my last two stitches. I'm gonna skip that one and put three double crochets in to my last stitch. That'll end a row six. And now you'll have a total of 20. So what we're gonna do is just keep repeating rows uh, three and four until we get it as long as we want it to be. Remember, it's okay if it buckles up a little bit. Eventually, it starts to lay flat. You will have to give a little bit of stretching every now and again. Now, every other row, uh, one row will have two more stitches than the next row, um, and the next row will have four more stitches. So, two more one row, four more the next. Two more one row, four more the next. And you just wanna keep a repeating that until you get the shawl as big as you want it to be. Like I said, I did mine smaller because of um, tutorial purposes. I just did a little cape lip so I can do more. You do it as big as you want until it suits you. One thing you can do at the end, if you like, before you tie off, you can go ahead and work one single, evenly space out single crochet stitches across the top and that'll help smooth out the top and make it more straight and clean looking. That's an option if you'd like to do that if you have enough yarn left. 
but that is it that's all there is to it i hope you enjoyed my tutorial it's pretty easy pretty simple to do um and in case you wondered i did do a total of 30 uh rows that's it that's all there is to it uh if you make this or anything else um, off my channel, I'd love to see a picture of it. You can post a picture of anything that you make uh, from my tutorials on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook uh, fan page. I'd love to see a picture of it. There's a link to that below in the description box. Also, if you look over there on the right hand side, I'll post a playlist of all my other shawls. I got tons of shawls in case you're interested in, in looking at them. But yeah, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you like this or and you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, and until next time, have a good day.